Hey guys, a very good evening. Um, I have got you a very interesting sort of a video, um, uh, a sort of a case study, I would say, uh, wherein, you know, uh, many of you did ask me how to scrutinize papers, how to analyze papers, especially the ones published in very well reputed journals. Okay. Uh, and that is a very good way of, you know, um, improving your understanding by criticizing very, uh, you know, well thought out papers or papers which are published in very high impact or very well reputed journals. So uh, this is one example that I'm going to present to you. Now, um, you know, it has been tried for a very long time that, uh, you know, that we can come up with the uh, reactions wherein um, the metal is not required specifically for like, you know, um, organometallic coupling reactions, for example, Suzuki coupling. Okay, there have been many methods, right? And uh, recently, um, you know, in the year 2021, um, a paper was published wherein uh, they had catalyzed a Suzuki coupling that they had claimed. Okay, it's always very, very important to say the word claimed. They had claimed uh, that they have come up with a, a you know, a amine catalyzed Suzuki reaction. Uh, basically a metal free reaction where amine is acting as a catalyst. So of course it, it was a breakthrough uh, kind of a, a article and it was published in Asia Catalysis but many such breakthroughs um, have been published uh, before as well. In fact um, if you see there was an article in Journal of Organic Chemistry uh, wherein they have mentioned a reassessment of the transition metal free Suzuki type coupling method method methodology right. So over here this was I think in 2005 the, uh, the authors had claimed that they have uh, found a you know a coupling reaction wherein you know the metal metal is not required okay but then later on they found that there was some palladium contaminant in in one of the reagents because of which the reaction was cup was basically catalyzed okay so even palladium in such a low amount even in parts per billion also forget about parts per million even in parts per billion also palladium is such a strong strongly um, catalyzing agent okay so it can catalyze the reaction even if it is present in parts per billion impurity all right so it has been done along like it has been done before also but since it was published in nature catalysis um it caught a lot of attention but if you see um on 8th march 2021 uh, this actually i have covered before also okay i have a ig account an instagram account and i publish these kind of short videos over there as well but since this one was a more detailed account uh, that i wanted to present in front of you so that's why i'm making this video otherwise i've covered this before as well Right. Uh, so on 8th of March 2021, uh, you can see an editor's note. The readers are alerted that the conclusions of this paper are subject to criticisms that are being considered by the editors. OK, so there was some criticism uh, as to how or, you know, it cannot be so that it cannot be a mean catalyzed reaction. And the criticism is now let's try and, you know, dissect how they found out that, OK, this is happening without the you know, without the palladium. So what they did was they synthesized this amine using a palladium based, um, you know, use, using a palladium based reaction. And since it is a well known fact that if palladium is present, even in sm small, very, very tiny amount, um, you know, it can lead to cat, you know, it can catalyze the reaction. So what they did was uh, to basically make sure that the palladium is not present. They first of all, um, used column chromatography first of all to purify the product but it is a very well known fact that even after col column chromatographic separation the palladium sometimes remains okay then they use something which is called as a um, you know as a scavenger palladium scavenger so basically some kind of a, a reagent which can complex with palladium and can pull out palladium even in small amounts okay so they, they used a scavenger a palladium scavenger and you know uh, they they used column chromatography basically to separate out the palladium and get the pure catalyst which is the amine catalyst but the short short way the only known short short way uh, to basically prove that a reaction is metal free or palladium free in this particular case is to synthesize the same reaction okay or sorry to synthesize the same catalyst basically this amine catalyst they have used to synthesize that catalyst with some other metal or with some other method which does not involve palladium like for example with copper okay you can like whatever you'll see the whatever catalyst is being designed by them or whichever catalyst was used by them that could also be synthesized by a copper based reaction also but they used a palladium based reaction and they used these methods like co column chromatography and using a scavenger to basically prove that they have eliminated the palladium but for such big journals of such impactful journals it is very important that you know everything is comprehensively addressed so the first thing that was a little 
disturbing was that uh, you know they allowed the synthesis of the um, you know of the uh, molecule or of the catalyst the amine catalyst with the help of palladium method even though it could be synthesized by a copper based method also okay so there was no a uh, short short way of knowing whether the palladium has been removed or not and yet it was published okay so then uh, there was a huge collaboration or uh, i would say a very mighty collaboration from very different uh, re you know research groups and you can see over here these are the research uh, these are the researchers or or professors or scientists in different organizations who later on came up with a preprint and they kind of like proved uh, that you know this is happening because of the impurity in the palladium so first what they did the first thing that they did was they utilized uh, they, they synthesized the catalyst that was reported in that article using a copper based method and they found that when they synthesize it with a copper based method um the reaction could not be the reaction could not proceed smoothly the second thing what they did was they utilized electrolysis and uh, your uh, one of the spectroscopic te uh, techniques energy dispersive um, x-ray spectroscopy so using that what they found that when they did electrolysis of this particular catalyst and when they carried out the energy um, you know energy dispersive x uh, your x-ray photos of spectroscopy um they found out that indeed it had presence of palladium so this is how they proved using electrolysis and second is they synthesize the same um, catalyst using copper and then they tried to catalyze the suzuki reaction and it was not proceeding that smoothly so this is how they basically uh, kind of like eliminated or kind of like deduced that the palladium impurity was responsible for catalyzing the reaction so the problem is that first of all uh, this is a big issue and i'll tell you why it has become a big issue because first of all it's been more than 6 months and the even bigger problem is <laughs> that you know um, a, a article came just now uh, just this month only in chemical science which is again a very well reputed journal of uh, royal society of chemistry uh, which basically cited that article and they utilize the same thing transition metal free synthesis so basically they use the same catalyst i think what has been utilized in uh, by the uh, by the uh, researchers in that nature catalysis paper so the problem is there are two problems that can be highlighted over here first is the very poor peer review of this article peer peer review basically means the re the researchers very well known researchers in the field see the journal is chemical science it's a very well reputed journal so of course it will go to very um it should go to very reputed uh you can say researchers or professors in that particular field right so uh the fact that this article was published even though it is a very well known thing um, in the domain of uh, you know organic chemistry that uh, that you know that nature catalysis paper is still under criticism and it has been proved by that pre preprint that it was a palladium impurity the fact that it was still published or it was still approved by the peer reviews is quite startling honestly okay because at least people who are active in that domain or researchers who are active in th in this domain should have known that that nature catalysis paper the 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 conclusions of that paper are still under lot of scrutiny or still are being considered they are not being full proofed even that paper was not even cited over here that is also a big issue okay like it was cited but it was not said uh, explicitly that the conclusions are still under you know uh, are still under uh, what do you call still still under review they are under criticism it should have been mentioned in this paper as well because this has been recently published they they like he he's one of the authors of this particular article uh, which proved that this is not the, not a palladium free reaction in fact there is some impurity of the palladium even he tweeted uh, sorry <laughs> tweeted that how is it possible okay like for example if i go to the altimetrics over here uh, and show you one second so you will see how how much criticism it is facing So if I go to no, tweeters, see, are we really uh, being led to believe that? Be, are we really uh, being led to believe this nonsense again? I am still waiting for the debunk nature catalysis paper to be retracted, which has yet to be, ha which is yet to happen. Read. See, this is the direct result of editors of nature catalysis now sitting for six months. Okay, so even though lot of researchers have written to them and even proved through a preprint that you know. Uh, that is not because of a palladium palladium uh, it's not a palladium free reaction yet they have not taken any significant uh, you know it's been 6 months and they have not taken any significant uh, step to to remove that paper okay so so uh, there's a lot of you can say fury that how how come this can happen again you know 
again a paper is published and again a very high impact journal how is that possible so uh, and this and the problem is that it's a very well known fact in fact you will you will see there was a research article published in acs catalysis also phantom reactivity in organic and catalytic reactions as a consequence of micro scale destruction and contamination trapping effects of magnetic stir bars now this article uh, i think by russian scientists or russian researchers in itself is very interesting okay so uh, what happens over here is that what basically what they studied was that even in your magnetic stir bars because of the constant you know degradation of the magnetic stir bars there are some cracks that develop and when you carry out some kind of metal reactions these small amount of metal gets deposited in these cracks and when they try to analyze these cracks using various you know um various uh, using various spectroscopic techniques they found out that these cracks contain small amount of palladium and different kinds of metals which can catalyze the reactions so the magnetic stir bar in it itself uh, can catalyze the reaction so this is a very interesting paper if if some of you are genuinely interested i think you should definitely read it right so you can sc scrutinize the even the most influential of the journals provided you have the necessary knowledge and i think this is the best way to go forward okay if you can challenge or if you can see challenging does not mean that you have to prove them wrong but you just have to suggest improvements according to you uh, you know what could be the improved in that paper to further prove their point okay or what could what kind of study should they have done to further prove their point so if you if you can find out those things in even very high impact articles then you are going in the right direction and you know you could you could potentially be a good researcher in the future right so anyway i hope you found this video helpful if you did please give this a big thumbs up and please do share it with whomsoever you feel would be equally enthusiastic about these things okay thank you and uh, i'll see you in the next video hey guys so i am a verified educator on an academy and along with that i am also available on the unacademy plus platform where i am taking live classes along with other educators so in case you are interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the unacademy plus platform using my referral code that is sethi sethi and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you are not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the unacademy for that all you need to do is go to the unacademy website or download the unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is acht once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the unacademy platform all right